I have to ask you first, this is a legal thing. Are you AI? I am a biological neural network. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Okay. I've been not joking with people. I'm a biological neural network trained on expensive data by Microsoft Corporation. And um, uh, chat GPT or GPT-4 will actually parse that sentence and explain what I mean by it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. It's, it's like yeah. our own little it's attorney like, now. I love it, man. So, all right, I got a question for you. When's the Singularity yeah. event? When is it? Where is it? How do I get tickets? Oh, man. <laughs> um, do you have Parkinson's? Yeah. You, might get it, you might get it earlier. Oh, no. <laughs> I think oh, yeah. it won't happen all on one day, right? It'll, right. Just, it, it'll arrive for some, Neuralink, right? When, when you get jacked in and get wires on your brain, that's, that's pretty much getting there. Yeah. Right. I still think that's, I still think that's decade, decades, two, one, two decades away. Unless you have Parkinson's there, you already get a wire on your brain if you have Parkinson's. Right. Okay. And I met the surgeons who are doing that and they said, well, now we have a conversation with people and we're, we're like, well, you need one to fix your Parkinson's. Do you want more? <laughs> Do you want more wires on your brain? And it's like, yeah, jack me up. Put put eight in there, or put ten in there. Like, um, Neuralink is doing something like thirty two thousand on on the pigs' brains, right? Little electrodes. They've been doing all sorts of animal research to figure out how how the brains work, how to hook up to them, how to talk to them, how to write software that talks to brains, to biological brains, stuff like that. Let's say it's t a decade, right? Ten years. Yeah. Uh, we we have to go through glasses first. And we're not going to get glasses for three, four years. Normal, everyday people, five, six, seven years, somewhere around there. Once we get everybody on the glasses, so that's a decade, then we can start thinking about Neuralink because we'll have the data for, on everybody. Because these glasses are going to be watching your eyes, going to be looking in your ears, right? Going to be watching your hands. So all of a sudden it, it has a, them watching everything you do so um it'll have the data to really integrate into your life when you get the wires on the brain interesting you know, so maybe it's 15 20 years yeah for more or next for year i mean right more. things are speeding up so well, fast. the problem no it's not gonna be that fast yeah, because yeah. uh cutting open your brain and putting wires on your brain uh, first of all it requires fda approval and they turned it down so far mm -hmm. um but but it also is a hundred fifty thousand dollar surgery, and it has a lot of side effects, right? If you have Parkinson's, you'll sign up for that, yeah, right. But it, if you're a normal neurotypical person, you probably won't sign up for that anytime soon, because unless you're a billionaire, and even then, if you're a billionaire, why would you sign up for it first? You know, <laughs> it's like uh, let some other people be to test this thing for a while. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe Elon would do it, but right. I doubt even Elon would do it at for, for first, right? If, if you get a pair of augmented reality glasses on your face, you're probably going to think it's the singularity. <laughs> I uh, bet. Particularly if it's, I mean, you're seeing how good chat GPT is at having a conversation with you, right? So if, if there's an AI and it's just always listening and having a conversation with you and putting information on your screen or... Hey, you know, um, I don't have a good example. If I was holding a Coke can, hey, how, how much is 20 of these on Amazon? And I told you, right? Yeah. Um, it, you would be like, whoa, this is a new, a new world we're in, right? Yeah. Apple's going to come with a bigger product first this year, then a more consumer version of that product next Christmas, then the glasses. Okay. Right. So three years from now, me and you probably get a pair of glasses. Now, when I think of glasses, I think of the Google glasses that were trying to come out. I don't even know how long ago. Uh, these are, yeah, Google Glass was an early version, but it was only a little tiny screen. It didn't cover your visual field. Okay. Right? These are actually going to uh, have a feel, you know, a visual field that covers your visual field, so it can put SpongeBob on the table. 
right? Or it can extend my monitor and have two more mon virtualized monitors off to the side, right? I guess Stuff so. like that. And once that arrives, then you can bring virtual beings. So having a, a SpongeBob that's talking to you, oh right? Because SpongeBob is being driven by chat, by open AI, right? So you have been following just about everybody in the space. When did this start yeah. in your mind? This new era? Um, Siri, when Siri was announced, it was, they told me it was one of the first AI apps um, to go to, it was certainly the first AI app on the iPhone. Um, some people say the, the Roku or the, uh, um, some of the uh, robots that did uh, vacuuming had AI and stuff like that a little bit before, but it, right around that era was the beginning. And then I started tracking it and it started showing up in my oven. My June oven has an NVIDIA card with a computer vision in it and it showed up in my car. My Tesla has, you know, computer vision in it. And um, that's when I started following it. Last year, it started getting serious, right? Big things started shipping. And then that's when I realized, okay, I, I need to pay a lot more attention to this community. I, I, I care about new things, right? All the way back to childhood, I, I like new things. I like talking about new things. I like playing. I mean, if you told me, uh, here's a new restaurant, I'm in, right? <laughs> you know? right? I like new things. Um, and this community is kicking out more new things than any, any community before. And it's growing at a pretty good rate. I mean, I, I found 40 something thousand people in this community to follow. So, right. And these are all people, these are a lot of people with PhDs and yeah. going to Stanford or Carnegie Mellon or some school like that. Right. And coming out with some pretty serious skills and then, uh, you know, working on a team. I mean, a lot of these kids are writing papers around, about neural radiance fields now at Stanford and other places. And so they write that with three or four other people and they leave and then they start a company, right? Yeah. Let's say yeah. a friend comes to your door today and says, Robert, I I'm in, man. I'm in AI. Where do I start? What do I do? What would you say to your friend? Go to OpenAI and start figuring out how to get GPT-4 running. Right? There you go. I mean, I... That's the first one. Then uh, figure out, you know, when, once you start getting used to talking to that, there's a lot of other tools that do very specific things like edit a video or um, uh, listen to a video conference, like super normal listens to a video conference like this and writes a transcript, right? As we're talking and it does pretty good at that. Then it, at the end of the call, it looks through the transcript for patterns. Like, did we talk about tasks or themes, right? And it makes some notes about the about the transcript and tells you the highlights of the transcript, you know. And it does yeah. that in 300 milliseconds. And it does that on a Macintosh, right? On on the neural network on a M1 or M2 processor. So well, mindset. Let's talk mindset on this because as you want to embrace these tools, some people are like anti AI. They're not even looking into it. They're scared of it from sci fi movies in the past. What is the mindset shift that needs to happen for people to start embracing AI? Get over your fear because it's coming anyway. It's gonna take your. If you're scared, you're losing your job. You're gonna. You're really gonna lose your job if you don't use it, right? Because the first people who are into AI and are really using it, they're becoming more, much more productive. So you're gonna be the last one to get fired if you're really productive, right? Your boss's gonna go, man, that guy is kicking out some work, <laughs> right? Or that girl, right? You know and. And I sat down with an optometrist on Friday and we just did some simple searches like, uh, can you write me a blog post about Invisalign uh, braces? And it did, man. And it's like, whoa, all right. So what does this all mean? Well, does that mean that it, her web team gets fired? Right? Maybe. But maybe she'll go in and say, I don't, I still don't want to deal with this. I, that's why I hired you all. So you got to get your productivity way the hell up, right? You got to use the tool. And I just, you know, I can show you, you can create web sites with this. You better start talking on this every day or, or I am going to have to lay you off because you're not staying up to date, right? 
Sort of That's like cool. somebody who says, I'm not going to use a cell phone. You know? <laughs> if you yeah. don't use a cell phone in the world today, you're going to get uh, booted out of the corporation, right? Yeah, right. It's going to be weird, right? Especially if, you're, especially if you're in sales and you don't want to make any sales calls. <laughs> it's like, I don't use the phone. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can never get you on the phone. You're a sales guy. Uh, let, let's, let's talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, there's a wave coming, right? And and my question to you, as you've been diving deep into this, is this wave going to be a wave of new AI native apps, or is it going to be existing apps integrating AI? Which wave is coming, or is it a Both. combination? Both. Okay. Both. I mean, I, last week, uh, Microsoft and Google announced that they're integrating these large language models like GPT into uh, their services that, you know, Microsoft Office, right? So... Soon you're just going to start talking to your computer and go, hey, computer, I need a slide deck made uh, this morning. My boss just assigned me a presentation on Wednesday and I need to get right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's sort of how you should be talking to it, too, because it uses some of that data to figure out like, oh, OK, you have a presentation on Wednesday. What's the topic? You know, it has, starts mm -hmm. having conversation with you and then it goes and builds a slide deck. And, and then you could start talking to it and saying, hey, I don't. I don't like the background. Can you find me a, can you, can you go over to stable diffusion and generate me some AI art to put on the background? A, a, maybe a, like a pink forest or something like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then it will, right. Boom. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden you have a pink forest on the background of your slide deck. Right. Yeah. And somebody who works like this is going to be much more productive, get a lot more done every day. And therefore they're going to be harder to fire than somebody who doesn't even know about this. Right. Yeah. If, if your boss comes in and starts talking about AI and you don't know about it, well, you're, you just mark yourself as, <laughs> as somebody who's not curious, not up to date, not using mm -hmm. the latest tools, not pushing yourself. Right. Not, not trying to figure out what, what is coming. Right. If you do are that, that person, you're probably not going to get fired that day. You might get fired tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it, seriously, programmers are telling me over and over and over. It, it used to take me a month to write code, this kind of code. Now it writes it in less than an hour with me, right? That's a huge, huge productivity shift. If you're doing anything with text, even answering customers, right? Hey, can you write me an email to an angry customer that, uh, you know, uh, and just tell it some details about yourself? You know, oh, I run a glass shop and I, you know, we had a problem with a customer. It'll write you a damn email and do a pretty confident job. Maybe you have to edit a sentence or two in a, you know, an email that's, you know, 20 sentences, but you're still 19 sentences ahead, <laughs> right? <laughs> Now, what's going to happen to school right now? Like, what it needs to happen for the education system to embrace this new era? Complete overhaul. There, I mean, the, some teachers are are taking to it and, and you know working with their kids with it or or their students with it if they're older. Uh, at Berkeley University, I, I judged a whole bunch of student projects in, in a design class, and many of them were using, you know, uh, stable diffusion to make their art. And after talking to them, oh, yeah, we used uh, GPT to write the text and, you know, help us out. Um, those, are, those are the smart ones, right? And that's the smart approach is to uh, pour on the gas, use this tool, use it to learn. But you still got to learn to write an essay because that's about making your brain think in a certain way, right? Or if you're a, a computer scientist, uh, sorry, you still got to know how to do algebra or, or calculus. It, you know, yeah, you can ask a computer to show you how to do it and help you and, and explain it, right? It, it's really crazy, right? It, it, it'll write code for you and then you can ask it to explain the code line by line and it does it's like this line of code goes to this api and it hooks this up and puts a variable into this memory location <laughs> it's yeah. like what <laughs> yeah. right so it helps you really 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 uh learn fast right and so it should be a tool that you use there but it does have bias it does have mis it does generate mistakes once in a while here's one if you ask it, what's the history of Silicon Valley? How did Silicon Valley start? You ask questions like that. It gives you the standard answer. And the standard answer is wrong. Even 
Even if you go to Hewlett Packard's garage, it says it's the birthplace of Silicon Valley. There's a plaque out there, a historical landmark. That's wrong. It started in the Transcontinental Railroad in the Sierras, which gave Leland Stanford the wealth to buy Stanford University, which started Silicon Valley. The problem is Stanford doesn't like to tell that story because they, uh, 1,300 Chinese or more, probably three times that amount, died in the tunnels on the, in the Sierras building the railroad because they were the first ones to use nitroglycerin, which is a highly unstable just, uh, explosive, right? By the way, chat GPT will tell you all about nitroglycerin, <laughs> right? What's really interesting is it knows the Chinese' role in the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. And if you ask enough questions, it'll hook it all up and say, oh, yeah, this is the true history of Silicon Valley. It, in its ingestion of all of human writing and history, right, it, it figured out the truth, but it doesn't present that to you at first. So you have to know, you have to know the history to be able to pull it out, right? Interesting. How does that work? Is that political? Like, why wouldn't it just tell you straight up? <laughs> because uh, the rich people uh, wrote the history. <laughs> yep. Rich white people wrote the yep. history, right? They don't like to tell the history that we stepped on a few people to get here, yeah. right? And and it's a dirty history. And the Stanford University VR team doesn't like to talk about that history. It's not. It's it's not how you. Uh, start the parent tour at Stanford University of explaining, how, yeah. oh, you know, this university was started by killing a few a few thousand Chinese building a railroad. No, that's not how they started. Yeah. Oh, this this uni university started Hewlett Packard and a couple guys got rich because they came here, yeah. right? <laughs> that's how they started it. <laughs> so, so it picks up those those signals from people, right? It picks up those biases, Yeah. right? And uh, this is the problem. It, if you if you don't know that, you know it's hard to pull it pull out the true complete story. And then in other places, I actually bullshit. So it just makes you know it makes up a fact, right? Because it's it doesn't know anything. It just knows what's the next likely word, right? Yeah. It's just and it's pretty good at that. But once in a while, it goes on a bad path and sort of wrecks the wrecks the thing. Right. And yeah. it gives you a bad answer. And it does it very confidently because it's like, ah, this is the next word, right? You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just picking the next word. I don't really know anything. Right. Yeah. And, and once in a while, it gives you some bullshit. It's really fun. If you, if you uh, know there's bullshit, you can ask it to remove the bullshit. Okay. Right. And because that won't... I, I, here's one thing I did I give it a thousand words that I wrote. Right. And then I told it to edit it and it changed the meaning of one of the paragraphs that bullshit it gave an error. And I said, can you please remove the bullshit you just put in? And it started changing the correct, the correct uh, paragraph. So it knew that something was r different about that paragraph and the way it picked the tokens than yeah. the other paragraphs. So it can start editing itself, you know. Okay. But uh, it didn't do a perfect job. So you, you, this is where the human still adds something to the equation, right? We, you, you guys still uh, understand uh, that you might know something that it doesn't and be able to fix it or improve it. The guy who ran IBM Watson, uh, which is IBM's AI, uh, early day stuff, he told me what what we showed you on TV is IBM Watson beats the human being at the game of Jeopardy, right? Yep. That's, that's what, yeah, right? It was one of the earlier AIs that started beating humans at things. Okay. You said what we didn't show you on TV is IBM Watson and a human being beats IBM Watson alone. Because we bring some weird shit to the game, <laughs> right? We're, we're biologic. That's why I call myself a biological neural network because we're different than the computer. We're, the computer is really light switches at the bottom of it. We're very different than that architecturally. So we bring some special sauce to the game. And I don't know where all that special sauce is, but once in a while it shows up, human fixes a mistake or whatever. By the way, 
that makes the AI better over time. So uh, 10 years from now, I don't expect it to make any mis many mistakes at all. Yeah. Right. And it, in fact, it is getting better. GPT-4 is better than 3.5, right? And gives you less bullshit. So. <laughs> You just see you working away, like, Chad GPT, cut the bullshit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, by the way, it's really good at generating bullshit. So if you want some bullshit, to tell it to create some bullshit. And yeah. it will. And it, create me a, a, a nighttime story for my kids and make it a complete bullshit. And, yeah. you know, it, it does. Just like humans, we, we bullshit too. I mean, it's trying to be like us. Absolutely, <laughs> we're good at it too. You know? <laughs> exactly. Particularly if you ask somebody something they don't really know very well, they they don't like yep. to admit they don't know it very well, and yep. they'll start bullshit. That's sort of how AI bullshits too. If you if you get to the edges of what it of the knowledge that it uh, you know ingested from the web and from books and stuff like that. Um, you know, it, it'll start uh, hallucinating uh, yeah. here and there, right? But it does it so confidently in between facts, right? So it, it, if you don't know your topic, it looks right, 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 right. And then there's some bullshit and then right, right, right. And, oh, you know, if you don't know your stuff, you're going to turn in an essay with some bullshit. Oh, my teacher's God. Gonna go, uh, you didn't find the bullshit. <laughs> you're going to be, you know, or you're going to see on that. Yeah, yeah, you're not good at finding bullshit. That's, yeah. that's first rule. If you're going to use the AI, you got to find the bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first rule. I like it. That's good stuff, man. So let me ask you about language, because I heard that Dolly 2 is trained with English captions. So a lot of countries like India are saying, learn English right now, because a lot of these programs are were trained in English. Is that going to matter much longer? No. That's what I thought. That's, um, that's easy question. <laughs> it's pretty good. At, actually, if you give it an essay and say, convert this to Japanese, it does. And it does a pretty good job of it. Maybe not completely perfect, but it it's pretty good. Nice. Right. Uh, so I've been around the world. I've been to, I don't know, 60, 70 countries. Wow. Right. And I've never needed to learn very much language be, because I've always been hanging out with the nerds. And the nerds always speak English because all computer manuals and all, you know, computer programming code, right? You usually are writing in English because that's how the system was set up. Because, you know, it was started here in Silicon Valley, right? So, you know, we all, we all uh, wrote English. And then as more and more people came on the world, they had to hook into our systems. And so, uh, same thing with chemistry. Chemistry uh, was largely started in Germany, right? So a lot of the old chemistry texts were written in German. So if you're a chemist, you had to learn some German to go through the old books and learn your and learn what's going on. Now that's not so true anymore, but because the translations are pretty good. I mean, I went to the Shanghai Disneyland in China, and I was talking to people with Google Translate, right? You know, and, and maybe it was simple stuff like where's a bathroom or, you know, where's this ride at or, right, or how do I find a taxi, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it did perfectly at that kind of thing. Um, and it it does more than that, right? And certainly now it's, it is really amazing. I mean, I, that language. Would you consider this the greatest opportunity in our lifetimes to evolve faster than we've ever evolved or use a skill set and scale it up uh -huh. faster? This is the, like, yes. Yeah. This is uh, an accelerant for human beings. Uh, that's going to lead us into a new, I, I call it a new Renaissance. Somebody else actually called it that for me <laughs> and uh, said, we're in a new Renaissance because we're getting all this new art and new photography and new writing and new, and new knowledge. Right. And we have a thing to talk to about anything and it gives pretty deep answers most of the time. So it's um, it's an accelerant for human beings, for sure. I mean, if we didn't have to worry about feeding our families and earning a living, we wouldn't, we, you know, we would find these tools very, very fascinating, right? Yeah. Because they help you build things. They help you do things. They help you think about things. They help you write books. They help you, uh, you know, do what you want, right? It's interesting you talk about making a living too. Do you feel like the basic 
income needs to be developed, some kind of safety net here if this happens faster than we think and there's a huge unemployment? But, I mean, we should definitely be thinking about that because there will be people who fall. I mean, there already are people. There's tens of thousands of homeless in San Francisco alone. So there, there's people falling off the off the table all the time. Um, and we have to have a better answer to that. The other way to look at it is uh, this is a very, very powerful education technology. It's a very powerful interaction technology. So the system could figure out like a mental illness just by talking to you pretty quick, right? If it kept track of you, you know, like, right? If you have dementia and your dementia is getting worse and worse, it can track. How, all right, how many times are you having trouble remembering your kids' names, right? Yeah. And it can keep track of your dementia and help you. Uh, Skip Rizzo down at USC is doing research with dementia sufferers with uh, virtual reality, and it really does help them because uh, when you have dementia, you get frustrated. You can't remember your own, you know, you're talking to your own kid and you can't remember them. Yeah. Right. That frustrates the hell out of you, makes you depressed, makes you irritable. Right now you're a miserable human being that you can't remember names, right? <laughs> right. And pissing everybody off around you. Yeah. Well, you take them into VR and remind them of who you are and remind them of your child, right? And all of a sudden your brain gets refreshed and some neurons are still firing and that helps you uh be a half your person and, and help you remember things, right? If you have an assistant standing next to you telling you, hey, you know, you're talking to your boy, you, this is your kid, his name is Patrick, right? And, you know, and here's what he was was talking to you about for the last two hours, <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Reminds you who you are, what you're doing, what you're supposed to be doing. That's coming. I mean, augmented reality glasses are going to help people who are blind to see. It's going to show them everything in their homes. Hey, uh, hey, Siri, where, where's the pepper in my house? Oh, it's uh, over here. We'll take you there, right? Because it knows soon with computer vision and the camera on your head, it's going to know every object in your home. Wow. Right? Yeah. So now I can tell You'll you. You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. <laughs> See? <Yeah. laughs> You'll you need to unlock your iPhone first. <laughs> um, it'll also help deaf to hear because if you can't hear and somebody's talking to you, it can it can do a tra uh, transcript right in front of you and tell you, oh, that person, here's what that person is telling you, right? Back to the blind person. If somebody hands a blind person a $2 bill instead of a 20 it can the computer vision can say that person just handed you a two dollar bill and you can go hey are you trying to rip me off <laughs> right <laughs> <You know? laughs> right and 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 so it can help you see and it can help you hear and yeah. these are going to be very very powerful technologies for those and then it can help people like with dementia and and a variety of other things uh, pfizer's head of r d had told me one time that they're doing all sorts of research on a bunch of different uh, problems, uh, human brain problems, you know, dementia and uh, depression and uh, stuff like that, PTSD, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, with with virtual or augmented reality, you can really, really uh, maybe not fix those things, but certainly improve uh, the human brain uh, condition for those things, right? I mean, my, my uh, washing machine uh, stopped working one day and was flashing a code at me. And what do you do? You go to YouTube and start searching on this brand with that code. And all of a sudden, a video pops up showing you, oh, you probably have something stuck in the pump is what that means, right? Here's how to take apart your washing machine and fix this, right? And I did it. It was, it, it was all right. But it was I had to watch a 2D video and do it on the 3D machine, right? Yeah. With augmented reality, it can convert the video to take this screw up, take this screw up, take this screw up, take the back off, it should look like this, right? And it's on top of the machine. So now I can teach anybody how to take apart a machine step-by-step, step, right? With augmented reality glasses, that improves a lot of people's lives.
my friend owns a scrap yard, you know, hey, here's how to take away that uh, part, that washing machine and save the engine out of it, you know, and use it for something else. You know? <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Robert Skull, I just want to thank you, man. I This is my first interview with you, and I would love to check out, uh, check up with you from time to time as I do videos of different stories and get, get a little piece of what you think. Um, and I hope I have better questions as I evolve in the space, too. I was trying to bring some good stuff. Hopefully, it didn't seem like I'm too much of a new. Ask GMT. Uh, what kind of questions do you ask? Uh, you know, would, would you ask an AI influencer? Yesterday, I had it right. Uh, pretend you're an AI influencer. What would you do? <laughs> and it's pretty. It's pretty good. You know, so yeah. you start playing with it. You start getting some ideas. Maybe it's not every question, but it gets you started, right? right? And gets you over your writer's block or your fears or yeah, whatnot. Right? Yeah. Oh, such great advice, such great use cases too. I had two grandparents that suffered with Alzheimer's, so they both forgot who I was before they passed. So that hit deep for me, Robert. I want to thank you so much for chatting with me.